The following was recorded in front of a live studio audience at the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe. Welcome to this episode of Pit Life Barbecue. Gather around the pit with your hosts, Johnny Mags and Messy Mike. Let's talk barbecue. What's up, everybody? Coming to you live from the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe in beautiful, almost summer-like Salem, New Hampshire. It's the Pit Life Barbecue Podcast, where we talk everything barbecue and a lot of other topics that you normally talk around the pit. As always, I'm joined by Messy Mike. Good day, sir. Ooh, <laughs> little, you get showing a little that, class huh? today, a little huh? class today. a boy. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we're joined by a chef, so I figured I'd bring some class. <laughs> we got to doll this up. I wore, my damn good, time. I wore my good Holly Davidson t-shirt nice. today. Nice. <laughs> What's been going on? Nothing much. Nothing much. Getting ready, uh, you know, for the season and kind of just waiting for the weather to change. And it's finally here, so hopefully do a lot more grilling and actually having fun doing it instead of doing it in the rain and <laughs> the cold. So, so far, so good. <laughs> Yeah. I saw you cooked uh, breakfast the other day. Oh, yes. I had a good day in my outdoor cooking arena, I yep. like to call it. Burgers, breakfast. Oh, well, burgers can't offer breakfast, but mm-hmm. we did those for burgers and dogs for lunch for my daughter's. She had a birthday party with some of her friends, so I did that for lunch, but yep. then she wanted um, wanted bre- breakfast, so I was all excited because I got to play with the Blackstone. And, oh, whipped that up, did, did a... Hopped out and did a little video of messing around with it and hash browns, eggs, sa- hash browns, sausage, sausage bacon. bacon, eggs. Nice. Oh yeah. So how'd the vortex work? Oh, that like vortex is awesome. Okay, nice, awesome. Burgers came out great. Mm-hmm. Burnt the shit out of the uh, dogs. Oh, okay. Because you don't get a like the sear. Yeah. So you can put you can throw it on in the middle. Get a quick sear on either side and just before you're done. Yep. Threw the dogs on there for a second. Boom, charcoal. <laughs> okay, I need I need a, six more dogs. <laughs> Did that real quick, and that was that. But uh, we got a bunch of guys already in the chat. We got we got my wife. We got Mr. Jonathan. You're watching both on Facebook and live. I don't mess around. He's multitasking. Ryan Guinea, what's up, brother? Kent, how are you, pal? Hello, hello. MJ, Mike Jordan, what's up, brother? Great talking to you last night. We were on a had a little bit of a good chat going on me and me and MJ last night. He was doing pork chops and uh, pork chops and applesauce. No uh, ribeye. Ribeye sounds so romantic. They were looking good. <laughs> Ooh, ribeye. Good. But we have today. Mm-hmm. We are joined by a good friend of mine and Oz, the one from Lytle, Texas, the one and only Chef Johnny Stewart. Chef, how are you, pal? Hey, I'm doing great. How are you guys today? Very well, sir. Excellent. How's everything down in Texas? I tell you what, it's starting to warm up. I'm trying to get this going here, guys. My wife tried to call in. And <laughs> oh, oh yeah, I noticed y'all, that we y'all can see me. We dropped your uh, we dropped your video a little bit there, Johnny. We got can your you audio. We we don't see you. We hear you clear as can be, though. We can see your name. All right. I don't know what we've done. <laughs> Try to call me, and I, I declined her. Uh, I declined her call, and I'm scared if I hit. Uh, uh, you know, what I'm saying if I hit. Uh, what do you call? There you oh, go. There we go. Oh, there you go. Back. But you know she's going to call back. back if she's like my wife. She's going to call back because you didn't answer the first time. Yeah. <laughs> you know, of course, I told her, "Hey, I'm going live at uh, at four so they would know. So you'd think she would be watching right now to know. But, uh, no. Evidently, she's not watching right now to know that. <laughs> oh, God. Oh. So um, where is where is Idle, Texas? We are, we are south of San Antonio, about 25 miles. Back okay. toward, like you're going toward Laredo. Interstate 35. Okay. Runs, yeah, half a mile from my house. Okay. All right. Have you been to um, Texas Pride? In uh, San Antonio? Yeah, yeah. They're out on Loop 1604. Uh, met the owner there many times. Mm-hmm. But uh, good hey, good guy, good barbecue. Enjoyed Texas Pride. It's good that you've been there and know the guy or you, or you know of him. Yeah, it's 
It's a nice looking place. It's in the middle of nowhere, but it's a nice looking barbecue place, and they got good food. It's it's out on the outer loop. You're kind of going through where you think I'm not much of anywhere. Then all of a sudden, wow, what's that? Yeah, exactly. Kind of jumps out at you. Yep, yep. Oh, nice. So you're a um, so you're a culinary um, first. First off, you're a trained chef. Train chef, yeah. Um, and got, you got the paper that says so. <laughs> <laughs> and you um, you teach culinary arts uh, right now at a high school and a college. Yes, yes, two okay. campuses. I do I do the uh, high school during the day, and then I teach at night. You can hear the bell going off. Kids just got dismissed right there. And they're hitting the door. Oh, is that what that is? Oh, yeah, that's the final yeah, bell. They're, they're ah. running out. I actually had a sub all day today. I was recruiting students at uh, one of the junior high campuses for, for our class. And so I had a sub all day today. And so right here at the end of the day, I hopped on here with y'all guys. Nice, nice. Actually, this would be a perfect time. Remember when you brought up that, you saw that article in Maine about the barbecue class of the schools? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Chef, do, they, do you guys in Texas, do you have... Like, um, we saw an article a few months back of a, a, a school in Maine um, <clears throat> teaching a barbecue course. Now, do you guys, do, do you guys down in, in Texas do that, or, you know, are there, are there, or are there even uh, possible barbecue teams at the high school or college level? Yeah, they, they do. And actually, it's something that's fairly new. Um, it started out with just uh, one high school saying, hey, let's uh, have a little contest to raise some money and stuff, I think, for that school. Mm-hmm. Uh, up in north central Texas, Burnett High School, I think, is the first one. And then uh, it's just grown from that. I have not entered it, um, but uh, we've kind of tossed it around and talked about it. I'm going to a new school next year, and we may look at saying, hey, let's let's get into that. But now – it is a lot of that isn't actually in the culinary end though. It's flowing through the uh, ag departments. So the FFA boys, the Future Farmers of America, a lot of them are uh, building the pits and then cooking on them. So part of it's flowing uh. through that, and I think there's some culinary groups that have gotten it also. But yeah, high school barbecue cook-offs. That's awesome. That's <laughs> that would be fantastic if it was yeah. that was in high school back then. You know, because I had seen I was flipping through ESPN one day and they had. Uh, collegiate bass fishing mm. and i'm like all right i go that's pretty interesting i go i wish i knew about that yeah. well, they you got know but then, cornhole then, now yeah Freaking then, amazing. then you had brought up the um the barbecue there. chef uh one question <sighs> for two questions what is it what does it take to become a chef and and you're you're we listed you as a trained chef so what does that take and then how do you take your mindset of being a chef which is kind of considered high-end and bring that over to barbecue, which is really considered sort of the lower end of the cooking cooking process. You know, one, uh, there's a lot of people that I consider consider chefs that probably don't have the certificate. I know some fantastic cooks that have never gone to school that, that I can, you know, just from experience, they've cooked all the, in some pretty nice restaurants, but they've never had that technical training. So, I, I mean, I, I've got an associate's degree in uh, culinary arts is what mine is. Uh, like the, the Culinary Institute of America, you can get a, uh, a certificate. You can get an associate's degree. And if you wind up in the Hyde Park campus up there in New York, you can wind up with a bachelor's degree in it. Uh, so they offer all those degrees that actually get you the, uh, the culinary arts uh, degree. I forgot. I did have my diploma. I've taken all my diplomas down over behind me. And what the, my official title is, but there, yeah, there's some official name up there on my uh, diploma from there. But I also have a bachelor's in education, also. Okay. And and so, do you when you're teaching classes, are you bringing? Um, obviously, you have a curriculum that uh, you you know you must have to follow. Um, but do you, how much barbecue are you actually you know going over in 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 each class? Well, I tell you what, I actually have a smoker here in my kitchen. We have an electric smoker. I know there's some people rolling uh, over in their graves right now or, or you know, fixing to throw, you know, stuff at us. But uh, it works very good. I teach the kids how to take briskets, pork butts, ribs. We've cooked all those things in our smoker. Uh, I teach them how to trim them, how to season them. 
And one thing that we do with the kids every year is a yield, a yield of product. So we'll take a brisket, which, you know, has such a terrible yield to its starting weight. Mm -hmm. And we'll take it and we'll weigh that brisket and then we'll cook it. And then we'll take the fat off and weigh it again and say, okay, how much usable meat, which is right around 50%. And, you know, I've got guys telling me all the time, oh, I get a 60% yield out of my brisket. I'm going, you're either serving a lot of fat or you're lying yep. or you got a pre trimmed brisket. Because year in and year out, I've been here 11 years. We, we do that test every year, and it's between 47 and 53% year in and year out every year. But, in, oh, you had asked about how do we we do that, you know, as far as getting into the barbecue. Um, you know, uh, cooking is cooking, and, and the principles are the same. The cool thing I like about doing the barbecue end of it, and I do it with my kids probably a lot more than others because I have the resources is, is uh, let me turn that off. That's a school phone. Don't need that one. Uh, Nice shot of his right beard there. there. <laughs> Pretty good. Yeah. So anyways, <laughs> I'm back. Um, golly dang. So anyways, uh, we do those. We do those kind of things. And uh, we're able to get. <laughs> Y'all guys talk. Let me see what they need. Sure. All right. <laughs> <laughs> just like you with the cell phone. You got yeah, me. I, it's I sorry it. about that, guy. No problem. Don't worry, no chef. Problem. So um, I'm gonna mute his line for a moment yeah. while he's on the phone. But uh, I mean that must be hard, you know, because if I was a culinary teacher, I would just want to go over barbecue all the time. Well, yeah, it's, I can see that aspect of it, you know. But you know, you do have to okay. get the curriculum. Correct. You, you back? I'm back. All right, all right. <laughs> we're here. Sorry about that. Though. No problem. They no, go. No. Oh, we're gonna. Some That's what's nice about live. That they didn't tell me about. And so uh, I'll try to make it if I make it, right? That's it. So, Chef, do you want to, you know, one of our yeah. always questions with our guests what got you into barbecue and, you know, at what age and, you know, what influenced you or how did you get bit by the bug, so to speak? I tell you what, I, I have cooked barbecue all my life. Um, I can remember cooking with my dad and my uncles. Uh, you know, I can remember cooking over fires as a, as a small kid, you know, along the riverbank, things like that. So outside cooking has always been a, a big part of it. And um, I tell you, it's just, it, it's kind of a neat deal. If you look, I've got actually got a video up on my channel that talks about men that influenced me. You know, of course, you know, my dad's and my uncles, but two guys, John Neglin and Alfred Carroll, an uncle and a nephew. Both of them had very different type of barbecue, uh, oh, barbecue, uh, uh, oh, uh, ways they cooked. You know, one was a vinegar sop guy, one was a dry rub guy. Mm -hmm. But uh, sitting and cooking with those guys, uh, you know, in high school and out of high school and young like that, learned a lot from those two guys. But uh, you know, it's just kind of a family affair down here. People around the uh, around the pit cooking brisket, cooking wild hog. Uh, cooking deer, you know, whatever we had. So we, we do a lot of outside cooking and things like that. Nice, nice. Chef, we have a, we have a comment in the, in the chat room for you. At least I, I'm pretty sure it's for you. Um, hi, babe. From, hi, babe. From L Libby Stewart. So I'm sure, sure that's M Mrs. Johnny. <laughs> yeah, that is, that, is my, that is my bride of almost 33 years. Oh, God oh, bless nice. you. God bless nice. you. And you guys, so you guys have a stand, you were saying, um, so you have a barbecue stand j just on the weekends that your wife and your son help you run? Uh, yes. Yeah, we cook barbecue every weekend, uh, open it up in the little town we live in. Sometimes mm -hmm. we run into San Antonio for different events, but primarily up there where we live. And we sell brisket, ribs, chicken, pulled pork, all the sides. We do rice, beans, potato salad, coleslaw. And we do a chipotle mac and cheese. And our dessert on Sundays is a Jack Daniels peach cobbler. Oh, oh, oh hello. Ooh. Chipotle mac and cheese. Yeah, chipotle, why, don't you, uh, yeah. why don't you just walk us don't through you elaborate the on that on just that a one. little bit? The, well, you know, the chipotle mac is, uh, we kind of started thinking about doing that. And so basically what you do is when you make your bechamel sauce, your cheese sauce. Yes. We'll take chipotles in adobo sauce. You can find them canned in your, in, you know, in the grocery store. And we'll blend those up with our cheese and milk. 
put that back into our mac and cover it up and, and it's kind of a creamy mac we don't bake it off we keep it creamy mm -hmm. and uh and we serve that oh that sounds good that sounds good yeah i'll be oh. doing that uh i'll be doing that later this week for lunch this week <laughs> tell you what even better do it tomorrow do you use Ooh. any beer in your uh because i'm only sauce? working a half a day tomorrow so i you might be no. seeing me no okay <laughs> No, don't. Uh, so we do that. Uh, the other neat dish is, of course, the Jack Daniels Peach Cobbler. Mm -hmm. uh, we've entered that in four cook-offs. It's won three, and it came in second once. Oh, nice. It's a good track See, record. You'll get that. that would, that's what you should have had for the hot, when we were on the hot seat. Because you had the Jack Daniels going. Yes. You need the peach, the peach cobbler, cobbler to start sucking the, yeah. some of it up. So, you know. Yeah, I was trying to show my manlyhood that <laughs> night, I guess. <laughs> Chef, would you what would you say yeah. is the number one lesson that somebody would learn in in taking one of your courses? Well, you know, it, it would depend on which one. You know, the high school kids are getting all the basics. They're getting, you know, how to how to fry, how to saute, how to boil, how to bake. Um, you know, we go through uh, making bread, making biscuits, uh, doing uh, you know, cut basic cakes and pies and things like that. Uh, in the college level, we get into a few more pastries. We do like eclairs. Uh, we do all the mother sauces, you know, so they're making bechamel, velouté, tomato sauce, holiday sauce, uh, espanol, the classic French sauces. Um, so it depends on the class that, you know, that we're doing and what we're doing and which kids we're dealing with. Uh, knife skills, they're going to learn how to hold that chef's knife, how to work with it. They learn to chop up everything that we can get underneath them to how to use that knife safely and keep their fingers out from underneath it. Yep. Yep. Nice, nice. We got another question here, Chef, for you from Mike C. Uh, do you have to cook every brisket competition to achieve the best look slash taste? You know, I'm, I'm not real sure what he's saying. Every brisket competition to, you know, I yeah, think the I best brisket is, is not necessarily a competition brisket. You know, uh, I like a brisket, you know, that has a lot of smoke on it and it's been there the whole time. More and more in competitions. And I don't do the competition like I use. I used to competition cook a lot. Uh, I was just in one the other day with Bill from over at Chicken Fried Barbecue. And uh, we took sixth place in brisket. But, you know, a lot of briskets now are hot and fast. You know, they're cooking them in five hours, six hours. Yeah, that's and so, and yeah. I don't think that's the best brisket you can get. Yeah, well, that, that was my night. That was one of my questions I was having for you. Where do you stand on the low and slow versus hot and fast? I'm probably somewhere in the middle. Mm -hmm. uh, I cook at about 275 degrees. And the difference between 275 and 225 is I get to sleep more than they do. Um, but I can cook, you know, instead of taking that hour and an hour and a half per pound, I'm taking 45 minutes to an hour per pound. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, and I don't think I lose anything on those briskets by going a little bit faster and, uh, and putting it in the smoke. I, I don't think you have to drop down to that, you know, 200 to 225 to get some excellent, uh, barbecue out. Yeah. You might even get better bark going at the higher temperature. You know, yeah, it, it, there's a point where you it starts going back down, mm -hmm. uh, but at 275, you can lay on a good bark and not and not lose a whole lot of sleep. Now, with the bark, uh, foil or butcher paper? Either one. I, I, I wrap with with uh, foil a lot. The thing with foil and the complaint you get about foil is is your bark bark will get a little soft, yes. which it will. So what I do is is one you can catch all the au jus and when you do it in, in in butcher paper you can catch some of it but if you do it in foil you're going to catch all of it but you're going to have kind of a soft bark because of the steam so all you got to do is is just plan your cook and that last you're going to take it out and set it back on the pit unwrap and it'll set that bark again and be just fine mm -hmm. but I, I like wrapping with, with both yeah, yeah. Well, Sometimes butcher paper is just a pain in the neck because your brisket's a little too big, you know, and the butcher paper just doesn't wrap, just kind of like foil. You know, it it all depends. Kind of like him, you know. It all depends. Mm -hmm. And and back with your the barbecue stand, the first time I I when I found out about the barbecue stand mm -hmm. was a picture that he had posted up for like a lunch special, <clears throat> nice barbecue sandwich, bag of chips, and what else? But a 
Nice cold, ice cold can of Big Red. Nice. Nice. <coughs> big Big Red over uh, cheer wine out there? Well, you know, Big Red is, is kind of a traditional for barbecue here. Yep. And what you'll see down in South Texas is barbacoa in Big Red. And, uh, and all all Big Red is is a red cream soda, you know. Mm-hmm. But it's the, the Texas version of it. And uh, and so that's kind of a classic for the for the barbecue scene is is big red mm-hmm. and that now that you it's hard to beat a good cold beer. Oh God, yeah. <laughs> you know when you're having that brisket too. Very but, hard. <laughs> uh, yeah, big red, big red is a, is a classic here in Texas. Yeah. Yeah, when we were doing um, uh, there's a event that we do every year, and and the same guy, uh, I know him as a he's a. He owns a coffee company, but every year he comes over with um, a couple of cases. Of, I think it's a uh, – is it Loco Choco or Choco Loco, the mineral water from Texas? You know, I, yeah, something like that. I, I know what you're talking about. I've, I've seen it. It's phenomenal. It's probably the best water I've ever had. You were talking about this last week yeah. after, after the yeah. show. Yeah, because it's not like a <laughs> seltzer. It's a um, – I mean, it's a little, little softer. Like a, almost like a Pellegrino type, or yeah, yeah, maybe a little mm-hmm. notch higher, possibly. But I would, yeah, I would, I would kind of compare that with a cold beer. Kind of when oh, it's nice you're, and you're ice kicked, cold. You're kicked off. <laughs> um, See you later. Can, can you mute, mute him, please? It um, uh, looks like we lost the uh, we lost the chef momentarily. That's all right. I'm hoping he rejoins. He'll come back. He'll come back. I want to ask him about the because the stand, you know, where's your where's your commissary? Are you using the school for a commissary, um, you know, when do you when you who's prepping your stuff? Are you prepping your stuff at the school yeah. with you know the kids helping? Yeah, he'll come back. Hey man, this you <laughs> this and, live TV. Hey, we 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 ain't we don't lie to you when we say we go live every week. Nope, there he is. <laughs> nope. There he is. Hey, am I back? Yes, You're back. Uh, See, we we can prove now that we go live. <laughs> we do it all off the cuff. So, <clears throat> Chef, the stand that you have on the weekends, are you um, you know, who's who's prepping your stuff? Are you doing it on you know the Friday night? Um, are you my, using the school? Son. Okay. My and son he, John, uh, John. I think Johnny's met my son before on, yeah. on some hangouts and stuff before. Mm-hmm. But yeah, he does my night cooking, so he takes care of all my briskets and my pork butts. He gets my uh, ribs ready. I get up about five thirty Saturday morning, or I'll get up Sunday and sun those two mornings, Saturday and Sunday, and I'll get the ribs on sometimes between six and six thirty, mm-hmm. and we'll take our ribs. But it's about a four hour cook on my ribs. Yep. You know, a lot of people talk about three, two, one. I have never in my life taken you know six hours to cook ribs. I don't I don't know how slow you'd have to cook to cook them for that long. Oh, 100 percent. I've never had a good experience doing the three, two, one method. I'll usually do like no, like. Two one one, you know. Um, yeah, at, at the at the at the at the most. Yep. You know, uh, we did. Uh, I've done two competition with ribs lately, and both of them are right around a four hour cook. One of them was about three hour and forty five minutes. Mm-hmm. And, and using that's cooking, you know, two seventy five, going two two and a half hours and wrapping for about an hour, and then back on the pit for about a half an hour. Now you're doing St. Louis, or you doing full spares? Uh, I do. Uh, I do. I'll usually do maybe not all the way down to a St. Louis, but like on, on the stand, we do what I call a Kansas city cut. Okay. So you're taking the breastbone out and you're leaving a lot of that meat on there off the full spare, uh, at contests. I'm going to bring them down close to a St. Louis, but maybe not all the way down, mm-hmm. but I like them still kind of meaty and, and in there just above that, you know, the longest bone yep. we'll go on there and go above it. Cause I mean, it looks better to sell that way instead of just doing spares where, you know, yeah, you get the meat, but they're kind of small. Right. Yep. Right. And also, the, to elaborate on your question of the prep, Mrs. Johnny Stewart <laughs> commented, "We prep in our mobile commissary." Okay. So. So you have a mobile okay, commissary. Yeah. What is what? Explain. Well, well, you know, on, on when you do mobile kitchens, you got to have a a lot of places. You got to have a commissary to work out of. Correct. We have what's called a, a mobile kitchen. So therefore. You know, we have refrigeration on it. We have a six burner stove on it. We have the pits on it. So we don't have to have a place that that uh, we go and cook everything and then put on the trailer. 
where, you know, people that are just a, a food truck that's packing food around, mm -hmm. they have to have a, a, a kitchen that they go and clean it at understand? or cook it at and take care of everything and then put it on their trailer and go sell it. We actually cook it on the trailer that we have. We have what's called a mobile kitchen. Okay. So, yeah, you just need a hand wash sink, a three bay sink, refrigeration. You got it. Yep. Yeah. Place to I, keep uh, it hot, place to keep it cold, and place to keep it clean. I got a couple of rookie questions, if you don't mind. I'm, I'm new to this barbecue thing. What's the difference between ribs and spare ribs? Okay, if you're talking about baby back ribs, I don't know. You, you guys, you guys seem to be throwing those two terms around, and it seemed like they, they meant two different things. <laughs> so I'm just asking. Yeah. The the baby backs are up off the loin. They're higher up on the on the pig, yeah. and then the spare ribs are lower. Mm -hmm. The spare rib is everything the baby back wishes it was. Okay. Yep. And then what is the difference between the two different styles? You said St. So Louis style and... St. Louis style is... So they're both obviously pork ribs. St. Louis is a... Um, a it's just the way it's cut. Like a Kansas City cut I was talking about. So you want it... So the way you trim them. Yeah. So when you do a St. Louis you cut, so, you're making the rib uniform. Okay. So you're taking right. out that backbone. St. Louis, you're going to take it pretty much the top of the longest bone, squaring it off. Uh, where in the Kansas City cut, you're taking the whole spare and that breastbone is kind of on that front edge. You got what would be our sternum, right? So when they cut those ribs, they're cutting down, you're right down the middle of the sternum. So you're getting on each rib, you're getting a piece of that sternum. You cut that off and trim it up a little bit. That's what we call a Kansas City cut. And then the spare rib is squaring it on off and getting more of that, that top end off of those ribs along with that breastbone. Mm-hmm. All right. Nice. Thank you. But you then do. they're both off the full spares. Yeah, and a lot around here, people like the baby backs more than the spares, and I don't know why. I mean, yeah, they say they're meatier, but I mean, I just think they're smaller and they're just less less tender. They're they are. They're not going to be as much fat on them, mm -hmm. and they're naturally going to have a little bit more tender meat, depending on how they yeah. they uh, how they how well you know everything was taken off of them when they were cut. Mm -hmm. But that baby back has got a little bit of the loin on it. That's why they call them also loin ribs. And so that's a nice tender meat, but it's also a less fat meat. And so, you know, we know fat's flavor. Oh, exactly. And uh, that's why the spares are much more flavorful. And they're a lot bigger, so they are a lot more meat on them. You think a, a baby back's meaty because it's got such a little bone and you're seeing the meat on there. Mm -hmm. But they're not as flavorful. Uh, they're probably easier to cook than a spare. Uh, you can cook them faster. Yeah, they and, do take uh, less you, time. It, it's not as e – it's – put it this way. It's uh, – you got to work a little harder to get a spare right than you do a, a baby back. Okay. Nice. Yeah. Go ahead. So, so Chef, the, the other thing that, uh, you know, I've got to know you over the past year or so, how did you get into cooking for YouTube? Well, <laughs> actually what we were doing was some of my students were like, we were watching some, we'd watch YouTube shows in class. So we're in class and, and they would finish their work and then want to, so we'd put on YouTube and watch barbecue or cooking or whatever. And uh, they would watch that and they're like, chef, you're better than that guy. You need to do that. Hey chef, you're better than that guy. You need to do this. So they were throwing stuff out there like that. And, uh, and so I thought, well, you know, I can put out some recipes. So if you look at my early recipes, I mean, my early videos, they're pretty crappy, honestly, <laughs> because I wasn't worried about editing. I wasn't worried about the, the sound necessarily and all that. I was just throwing my recipes out there to get recipes on it. And now, you know, I'm trying to do a good job on the videos. So my, my early videos are pretty terrible as far as the editing and, and all that stuff. Some of our early videos were terrible too. So <laughs> it's a work in progress. Not you know? from a production standpoint, <laughs> they weren't. <laughs> oh. the yeah, the production on our end is top notch. Yep. <laughs> Content, eh, Jerry's still up. <laughs> um, oh, so that that's pretty cool. Uh, we do got a couple more questions from the chat here. Uh, we'll just let this watch. This viewer remain nameless. It's you know, you'll probably be able to guess who it is. How much work does your son John do at the stand? <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what. 
at the stand, uh, sometimes not a lot. You know, it depends <laughs> on the day. John, is, you know, he's been up all night. So we, we try as much as we can not to use him during the day. Yes. Uh, so kind of when I get up, I let him sleep. And he'll usually get up around 9 or nine to 10 and uh, help us get out of there. And if he comes to the stand, like if my wife can't make it or I can't make it. And, of course, during the school year from the college, we use interns that have to do an internship before they graduate. So we have those guys helping us. So we try not to use John any more than we have to during the day. Mm-hmm. But like last weekend, he was there both days. So he cooked all night and he helped sell, you know, during the whole day. So he, he worked his tail off. His mama took off one day and I took off one day. And the interns, you know, finished their semester up. So for the summer, it's just the three of us. But, yeah, he, uh, he earned his pay last week. Right? <laughs> yeah, plus on Thursday of last week, we did a catering for 350. We catered the athletic banquet out where we live. And so he was up all night Wednesday night. And then he was up Thursday getting everything ready, doing the side dishes. And he uh, uh, was there till late Thursday night, you know, getting everything done. And then he was back up Friday night all night, all day Saturday, up Saturday night all night, and up all day Sunday. So by then he was – but he's young. He can handle it. <laughs> 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 and, uh, well, th- this next question will probably give it away of where I got my questions from. How many times have you fallen asleep watching the hot seat? How many times have I fallen asleep watching the hot seat? Usually it's, uh, it's uh, you know, actually during the hot seat, once during the hot seat. Uh, and uh, it was starting and I woke up and it was over. <laughs> so I've done that. In the hangout, oh, I'd say three or four times. You know, we've... Uh, but I'm not the worst at that. You know, when we do the hangout after the hot seat. Uh, I think I I'm the worst at it. <laughs> that Amel McClamon of sleeping the hardest of anyone I've ever seen. He and, has. Uh, and Jason over at uh, Easy Bake Barbecue. Though Those are probably the two worst at, uh, at dozing. And the only reason Kent doesn't doze is because he's standing and he would fall down if he did. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh. Yeah. Um, Okay, so you guessed who it is. So are you going to Kent's uh, competition in September? You know what? Uh, Bill at Chicken Fried and I have talked about going up to Kent uh, for that. And uh, with the new job being at the new school, i got to kind of look and see what's going on and when he and I can get off. But if it's at all possible, Bill and I are going to drive to Iowa and try to get into Kent's uh, cook-off up there. Nice. And his last one, would you please send him a barbecue vault? <laughs> you know, I'll tell you what, you know, a lot of people want those vaults. Those are, those are sweet, sweet cookers. And uh, the guys at Pitmaker are tremendous. They're, uh, they're, uh, I've already talked to the owner and everybody, and I'm supposed to be getting another one of their pits. Um, and I'm not sure what it's going to be. Uh, what I told Victor was, was send me whatever you, you want to sell. That's what I'll, I'll cook on. But he does know I want to uh, offset, you know, stick burner. I have two barbecue vaults, mm-hmm. which are just cooked wonderfully, but they're sniper. My, my dream pit is a magnum sniper from Pitmaker. But uh, they have one called a short sniper that's uh, a little, little smaller. It doesn't have the insulated firebox. But it is a great cooker, and so I'm hoping about that. And Victor and I have been talking. He's just been really busy. But, yeah, uh, Victor Howard at, at Pitmaker is is great. And if y'all haven't seen those, y'all need to check out Pitmaker because their, uh, their pits are fantastic, their rubs, uh, sauces, and, and him and I are going to be doing some more stuff together uh, with other things besides just the pits here pretty quick. Oh, that's awesome. And they're out of Texas, Correct, Pitmaker? Houston. Yeah, Humble, Houston, yeah. Humble okay. Texas. Okay. Looks like Humble, but it's, we say Humble. Humble. And it's, it's over in the Houston area. Okay. Um, so, and your barbecue stand, so it says you're open from 11 um, until you sell out. How many right. How many times do you guys sell out? Oh, mo- most times. You know, we've kind of got it now where you get an idea of what you're selling, you mm-hmm. know, so you kind of got an idea. The earliest we've ever sold out is about 2 o'clock, and – we're usually always out of there shortly after five, maybe six latest. Mm-hmm. Um, last summer was actually our slowest summer. You know, four summers and last summer was our slowest ever. And it, it got real slow actually last summer. Not real sure why, 
But starting off this spring, things, you know, the winter's always kind of slow because we're out in the open. We actually set up some tables underneath a, a big uh, uh, shed. It used to be what we call the peanut sheds there where we live. They'd dig the peanuts and bring them into town and they'd park these big peanut wagons and hook fans to them. And they would blow air through them to dry the peanuts. Well, um, they don't have all the peanut production down here like we used to. So we park by that shed and put tables under it. So you can figure in, in the winter, you know, not a lot of people want to sit out there and eat. But summertime, spring and summer is our big time. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so far, this spring's been well. And we're hoping for a good, good summer, much better than we had last summer. Nice. So what are you cooking for poundage usually per weekend? On your, on uh, your we'll we'll cook anywhere from well you say like a, a case of briskets we'll cook five briskets each day yeah if you're looking around seventy pounds each day yeah a couple of pork butts a few racks of ribs a few chickens uh, some weekends you know we'll sell ten briskets there have been some weekends we've sold you know uh, fifteen or twenty in the past last time we never did that but. Um, you know, our best day has been about, I don't know, about $1,200 in sales, something like that. So it's not bad for a, a Saturday gig. John goes to school full time at the college. Mm -hmm. He's getting a, a degree actually in jazz guitar. So, uh, you know, it's a good wow. job for him. He can go to school all week and then cook barbecue on the weekends. And so it works out great of, of keeping him. And Wednesday uh, night, Thursday know, night, Friday night. <laughs> nice. Absolutely. Well. Uh, Leprechaun just jumped in, says hello. Um, well, Chef, thank hello. you so thank you so much for taking some time out to join us. I I, I know I've been uh, trying to get you on for a while, and it just had hasn't quite been been the e easiest path here. But finally, I'm glad I was able to get you on, and thank you for taking time out to join us. I really appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. It was great oh, to to totally meet you. Totally, my pleasure. I've been, I've been, well, I wanted to do it and get with you and uh, and Mike and, and talk. You know, it's always fun to talk barbecue. So oh, it all definitely always, always is. Barbecue to anybody. Yeah, so, we we will definitely do it again, sir. Thank you so much. Thanks, Chef. My pleasure. Again. Thank you, guys. Thanks, Chef. Well, that's it for this week, folks. We'd like to thank you all for joining us. You can catch the. What are you pointing out? His, um, his website. Yeah, I'll get to you. All right, just making sure. You want to do this? No, go ahead. You got to button down to a science. Go ahead. We'd like to, you can catch the video on Facebook YouTube, and YouTube. Catch the audio on iTunes, Podbean, Spotify, Spreaker, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, and other catches. On social media, find us on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, at Pit Life BBQ. We'd love to hear from you. Please send your questions and comments to podcast at gmail.com. Please subscribe, like, rate, and review. And more importantly, hit that share button. We really appreciate it. We'd like to thank Chef Johnny for joining us, taking some time out of his busy day. Uh, you can catch him in his YouTube channel is Texas Style BBQ and Cuisine. He has a ton of great videos from regular you know regular grilling to smoking to blackstone griddle cooking a lot of great stuff Bre covers breakfast lunch and dinner mm -hmm. and a lot of great information on that and i'm sure uh, if you have any questions if you shoot him a note or whatever oh absolutely he'll definitely you know get back to you and hopefully yep. help you out yeah a lot a lot of great stuff on that mm -hmm. uh I'd like to take a quick quick second to wish my daughter harley a happy 10th birthday tomorrow. Happy birthday. 10 years. Happy birthday. Wow. 10 years and she still likes me. <laughs> Not bad. <laughs> but anyway, guys, thanks for joining us. Until next week. Keep, keep the, the smoke, smoke rolling. rolling. Barbecue fans, if you're hankering for some meat when you're on the go, I'd like you to try Two Guys Beef Jerky. It's smokehouse cilantro beef jerky with fresh cilantro and a classic blend of spices and flavors. This smokehouse cilantro jerky will quickly become one of your favorites. One bite of this amazing jerky and you'll be hooked. A three ounce bag sells for $8 and will sell you three bags for just $19.98. That's a 20% savings, but that's not all. 
For our Pit Life Barbecue listeners out there, we've got a special just for you. We'll throw in a bag of our bacon jerky free. This is fiery, sriracha-style bacon jerky, and it's addictive, and it's absolutely free. Three bags of beef jerky and a bag of bacon jerky for just $19.98. That's a $12 savings right there, and that's still not all. Order now and put BBQ as your coupon code, and we'll even pick up the shipping. Go to twoguys.com slash jerky. That's the number twoguys.com slash jerky. Put three beef jerkies in your cart and put the coupon code BBQ and we'll automatically include a free bacon jerky and cover the shipping costs. Twoguys.com slash jerky. That's the number twoguys.com slash jerky. Three bags of the best beef jerky you ever tasted. It's one bag of the addictive bacon jerky and free shipping on the whole order. Order today because this offer expires soon. Twoguys.com slash jerky. The views and opinions expressed by the hosts, guests, or callers of this program do not necessarily reflect the opinions of the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe, the United Podcast Network, its partners or affiliates.